disgusted by his government and so proud of his community for opposing their actions. The Bend police chief also arriving on scene, saying his officers were there to protect protesters and not to assist federal agents. That's why we're not involved in this. Are you here to protect the citizens of Bend? I, so what I'm telling you right now, though, I, I want everyone to really hear. My information is that uh, there will be federal agents coming here and they will ensure the safety of their uh, employees and the people here. These protesters, whether we're talking about the ones in Oregon or Illinois or anywhere else, have a destabilizing effect on politics. It still remains to be seen if these protests will help President Trump or Joe Biden's campaign, as both candidates work to use this current situation to boost their electoral chances. But it's important to remember that the rhetoric used in politics also has consequences. While many Democrats have been quick to support the protest, even when things do get violent, they've been mostly silent on the actions of Antifa. When America's Chanel Rian asking President Trump on Wednesday if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris should be forced to denounce the group as a domestic terrorist organization. Please, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to highlight a kind of odd situation. In the last hour or so, if you Googled Antifa.com, it would take you straight to Joe Biden's website, his official campaign website. Odd situation, we don't know who's behind that. But it raises an interesting leadership question. Should Joe Biden, the Democrat Party, Kamala Harris, should they publicly denounce uh, the Antifa as a, as a domestic terrorist organization? They should. I think they're afraid to. It's, uh, in my book, it's virtually a part of their campaign, Antifa. Uh, the Democrats act like, gee, I don't know exactly what that is. Take a look at uh, Portland. Take a look at any place you want to take a look at. And they're all over the place. They were here. Joining us now to help analyze these developments is Lieutenant Stephen Rogers, a retired military intelligence officer, FBI National Joint Terrorism Task Force agent, and an advisory board member for the 2020 Trump campaign. Steve, it's good to see you again. So right now, we're talking about the idea of Antifa. We heard the president asked about that and whether or not that people such as Joe Biden, such as Kamala Harris, should denounce the organization as a domestic terror organization. Do you think that they should? Well, they absolutely should uh, denounce it as a domestic terrorist uh, organization because what they have done is terrorize cities around the country. I mean, one has to be really blind not to understand what this organization has been doing. A lot of the fires and buildings we see, the looting we see, is uh, actually uh, the activists called Antifa. So they should denounce this organization as a terrorist group. And I think it's worth noting, too, that it wasn't too long ago where Senator Kamala Harris was talking to the acting ICE director and made him answer whether or not ICE was comparable to the KKK, a domestic terrorist organization that he said uh, doesn't really have any parallels. So she was trying to make the comparison between those two. Yet those two individuals, that being Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and really most of the Democratic Party, are silent on the idea of Antifa. And now, for example, we see last night that protesters are once again returning to that federal courthouse in Portland. But I was under the impression that this violence was being caused by the uh, federal agents being in Portland. That's what a lot of mainstream news networks were telling me. Does it end up that they were wrong about that analysis? Well, they were dead wrong. The uh, federal agents there were not the reason for the violence. They were the reason why the violence didn't spread. And, you know, you brought up something very interesting. We, the entire nation saw Kamala Harris and Joe Biden on TV last night. Not a word about uh, the violent protests, not a word about the destruction, not a word about how they would solve the problems. The only thing we have with regard to what they're saying is that they blamed the federal agents, law enforcement officers on the violence, which is totally not true, proven by the fact that they are no longer there and the violence continues. And here we are, and it's still continuing. And I think it's worth noting, too, that even before those federal agents did arrive in Portland, I think it was something like 50 days of continuous violence in the streets of Portland. So I think that whole narrative has basically been put to bed at this point. But it does raise an interesting question. What is prompting the unrest that we're seeing on the streets? I mean, a lot of people will say that it stems back to the coronavirus lockdowns, that people don't have work to go back to in the morning, and maybe that they're just struggling financially with evictions coming up or they don't know how to make a paycheck. But right now we are seeing an uptick in violence in New York City, Chicago, Portland, all across the country. What do you think is causing it? Well, a couple of things that uh, I believe are causing it. One, 
There's no doubt in my mind, and this is my personal opinion, just based on a little information I'm getting here and there, is that there's a possibility that the Chinese Communist Party is doing some funding of this through other organizations. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, information about George Soros and his uh, funding of a lot of these uh, uh, organizations. So what we see in a lot of these uh, riots and the unrest are paid people, people getting paid to create this unrest. But what's chilling is the tacit approval, and I'll use the word tacit, uh, of the Democrat Socialist Party. They're not pushing back on any of this. They have not come to step shoulder to shoulder with the president and say, look, he's right. When it comes to violence, we're all Americans, and this has to stop. So you have the elected officials of the Democrat Socialist Party by taking a knee, emboldening and embracing what's going on, and then you have the outside influences. And Steve, you bring up an excellent point because uh, I, we, I've heard that before, too. I mean, throughout the entirety of these protests, we have been hearing that Chinese uh, infiltrators have been trying to hijack this movement a little bit through misinformation campaigns, trying to sow discord throughout the United States. And even yesterday, for example, Chanel Rian, our White House correspondent, asked President Trump about Antifa. But she referenced this one article that was or I'm sorry, this one website, Antifa.com, that was circulating. And when you went to the site, it was redirected to Joe Biden's website. And a lot of people were wondering where that came from. And we're seeing reports today that it is actually registered to some Russian organization overseas. So does that kind of build on the idea that these misinformation campaigns stemming from Russia, from China, even from Iran, that they are being successful in sowing discord here in the United States? Well, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, and the other part of it is uh, that because of the uh, silence, number one, of Democrat socialists from City Hall to Congress, because of the, the fact that there's been no pushback against Antifa, but there has been pushback from these Democrat socialists against ICE, against law enforcement. So all of this uh, is put into one pot and you add all that fuel, you got a flame that is now out of control. Yeah, and I think the American people are a little bit over this unrest. I mean, I think they were on board with police reforms at the very beginning. I think everybody saw the George Floyd video and was very disturbed by what they saw. But I think at this point, I think the majority of the American people know that the rioting in the streets of Chicago or New York, Portland, wherever it may be, that doesn't have anything to do with George Floyd anymore. In fact, that is disproportionately hurting minority communities, minority small businesses, immigrant communities. I think the American people are smart enough to know exactly what's going on. So I think that is the positive development when we're talking about this not necessarily accurate portrayal of what's going on in the streets. But Lieutenant Steve Rogers, I appreciate you coming on the program tonight. Thank you. It's still ahead. There aren't many people having...